The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Terramina. Welcome to OAA Now. Here I'm Sammy Terramina, blogger of Around the OAA, the host of Last Week Brain Cells, and the host of Brain Terramina is an ordinary toasher. I'd like to welcome those on the local voice on SoundCloud and those on YouTube. A lot to talk about this week. Obviously, we got um, news at Oxford, new boys basketball coach. We're going to break that down. Also, we kept the regional um, for track and field. Um, start of the postseason underway for um, girls soccer. Um, I mean, like, we'll see um, We'll see what happens there, obviously. Um, big news today, of course, over at um, Oxford. Um, obviously, um, of course, um, Oxford did go with the new boys basketball coach. Um, Joe Fredor- Frederick is the new boys basketball coach, of course. Um, um I mean, like, obviously, when you look at the um, coach over there at Oxford, um, he takes over for Coach Steve Laidlaw. Um, obviously, the um, big story here, obviously, of course, um, with Joe, um, he was the um, JV boys basketball coach. Um, he was also um, an assistant at Coach Steve Laidlaw over at Oxford. So, you know, so it's a very interesting dynamic. Um, when you look at the hire, I mean, like, you know, I think it'll be very interesting to say the least. Um, I think it's a good move. I mean, it really is. Um, so I think, I mean, like, obviously when you look at Oxford last year, they kind of struggled a little bit. I mean, they were a very young team. Um, I mean, like, you know, so it'll be very interesting to do, see what happens to them um, with Oxford. I mean, like, um, but, you know, they do return some key players. I mean, obviously Jake Champagne is a big time player for them. Um, Champagne, of course, we know what type of player he's more capable of. He can go off for 30 on a night. Um, I also think they got Dominic Cassisi, of course, the um, quarterback of Oxford. Um, so I'm curious to see. I, I think Cassisi's a more better basketball player than he is a football player. Um, but it's interesting. I think he's going to be a good addition, good piece for them. You got Luke Stofan, of course, he played some big time minutes last year. Um, also you have the Katie brothers, um, Jay and Drew Katie. Um, so it'd be very interesting to see what happens with Oxford. I mean, the direction they go, um, but with their coach, I mean, I mean, like coach fat is always, he's paid his dues. I mean, he's really, he's really paid his dues where he's really like, um, I think honestly, I think he was varsity ready. Um, a couple of years ago. I mean, like, I also think he's varsity ready now. And I think when you look at this, I think it's the perfect situation for him. Of course, he's in the, he's in the building. He's a social studies teacher. Um, he's a very aggressive coach. He knows how to win. Um, obviously, you know, that's a big, um, you know, so when you look at the hire for Oxford, I mean, like, you know, having a guy in the building, it's a big deal. Um, Having a coach, you know what I mean, who knows the system, who's worked with the course coach, Steve Laidlaw, that's a big deal there. Um, so when I look at the transition, it really, it doesn't have to change too much. I mean, like, obviously, when you look at Oxford, um, it really doesn't have to just change. And, you know, when you look at it with Oxford, um, you know, from Laidlaw over to, Coach Fed, I mean, like, really, that's a direction that I see, honestly, you know, where it's going. I mean, like, it really, really doesn't have to change. I mean, like, and I think, honestly, I don't really see any changes with Oxford. Um, the division they're in, they're in the blue. Um, you're in a division with, um, you know, you got Stony Creek, Rochester. Um, you got Pontiac, Avondale. Um, Burnley University's in there. Um, so it's an interesting division. It, it's competitive. I mean, obviously, when you look at the teams that are in there, Avondale's one to look at. Um, another one to look at. Um, I think personally, you know what I mean? I think Avondale will have to be his favorite, obviously, because of, um, you know, when you bring in a coach, um, you know, when you bring in um, the job, I mean, like, they're – They've got some coaching changes, obviously, over there at Avondale. Um, I think, you know, when you look at 
Coach Fed obviously got the system there in place. Um, with Avondale, I just don't know if the system's in place over there. Um, you know, cur- on a curious note, I mean, when, when you look at Oxford, you're going to have some curiosity there. You're going to have some... I'm curious to see where this goes. Um, I think it'll be very interesting to see what happens. I mean, curious to see how things go. Um, with Coach Fed now taking over at Oxford. Um, I'll be honest. I think it's a great fit over there. I mean, like, I'm going to be flat honest. It's a great fit because I expect Fed, he's almost like, and I'm honest here, I think he's almost like a carbon copy of Coach T. Blake because, you know, what he expects, proven winner, obviously, um, was, his, was um, Coach Laidlaw's assistant. Um, so, I'm be very curious to see how that this team's going to do under Fed, because it's going to be a different rodeo under Coach Fed than it was, you know, under Coach Laidlaw, but... You know, when you look at what Coach Laidlaw did at Oxford and his two stints over there as Coach of the Wildcats, um, no one's going to forget that 2019-20, um, that um, 2018-2019 season where, you know, obviously where um, Oxford had that senior experience um, that, you know, they had that senior experience where, um, you know, that proven experience when you look at players like Michael Raish, um you look at um town you look at both Townsends, um just an incredible team that that team had. I mean, that went to the regional finals. I mean, like, you know, I mean, no one's gonna ever forget that team over at Oxford. Um not gonna be in a long time. I mean, nobody's gonna forget that team. So but I think Coach Fed's gonna do a great job over there. I, I just think he's gonna do a wonderful job there. I'm curious to see where the direction that team goes. Um I think program strength has been very good for them. Um, some interesting side notes here um, on the hire. Um, he was a graduate of Oakland University. Um, know him very well. Um, he launched a youth basketball club at Oxford back in 2018. Um, so when you look at the word program strength, you know where that's coming from when you look at Oxford. Of course, Oxford's got a ton of program strength when you really look at you know, the direction that program's been. Um, obviously, the mindset, the direction, um, just basically, like, um, you look at the division that they're in. Um, you know, and I forgot to mention Roy Oak and Berkeley's also in there. I mean, like, obviously, you know, Roy Oak and Berkeley are two teams that are going to be solid next year. Um, but when you look at, when you look at it here, there's really, I don't expect to be a lot of coaching changes, a lot of transition changes. I mean, like, I'd be shocked that there is, but I think with Coach Fed in there, I think it's going to be really interesting. Um, he did do a play, he did do a meet and greet with the players. Um, but I'm curious to see, you know, when you look at the schedule, the district, when they come out probably next month, most likely. Um, when they do release the um, basketball districts, the question I have for Coach Fed's team is going to be: It's come postseason time. Is will they be in a district with, um, you know, with Grand Blank, Davison, Lapeer, or will they split that up and maybe put a district with Lapeer, um, Oxford, put Lake Orion in that conversation, um. Maybe put a Romeo in there. Um, I think it would be a really interesting district, um, to say the least. I mean, like, if Lapeer, Oxford, Lake Orion are all in one district, and, you know, you can put in maybe, like, a um, a Romeo or maybe a, um, or maybe, or maybe both Waterford, Kettering, Waterford, Mott, maybe St. Clark's the Northwest. I think that would be great um, if you're a fan of Oxford because, to me, when I look at that district, geographically wise, I mean Clarkson is seriously closer to Grand Blank than um than um you know than I would put Oxford closer to Lapeer. I mean, like obviously you know Lapeer and Davidson are a lot closer, but I think Oxford, you know, the fact of the matter is that they got sentenced. Um, just it's just mind boggling. 
So if you're Coach Fed, you know, if if I had a request to say the MHA, obviously, um, basically I would say please don't send us Northwest, you know, because we've been getting we've been getting killed, you know, the last few years when we played Grand Blank. Now Grand Blank's looking for a new basketball coach, um, which is very interesting, huh? which is very interesting because Grand Blank is gonna be a team that, you know, the Bobcats um, I will be very curious to see how they do. I mean, like, obviously, they just lost their coach, um, who's now the new coach at Nova Detroit Catholic Central. Um, I think it'd be very interesting if a guy like Brandon Swanee, um, takes over that job up there at Grand Link. I'm very curious to see if that happens, but I think he'd be a good candidate. I mean, obviously, you got the Rochester Adams job. I mean, we're keeping a real close eye on that. Um, I think it'll be interesting, but back to Oxford. Um, obviously, um, before I got home a little off topic there a little bit, I mean, like, you know, it's been a long day, I'll tell you that much right now. It's been a pretty long, hectic day. So, but other than that, I think that, you know, with Joe, with Coach Fed, um, he's going to do a great job over there. I, I, I just think, honestly, um, I like where Fed's at. Um, with Oxford, I think the players do. Um, he's a player's coach. So that's something to really, really watch for is, you know, is can Oxford, you know, overcome, can they be one of the top contenders in the blue? Can they be, you know, can they, you know what I mean? i will be very curious to see what happens with them. I mean, just really, really curious to see how things go for them, um, over there at Oxford. So. But like I said earlier, I'd like to hire Coach Fed. He's in the building. He's in-house hire. Um, you know, program strength, you don't really have to worry about it too much. You don't have to worry about the coaching transition. I mean, like, so when I look at this hire here, it makes a lot of sense to um, go with Coach Fed to take over the um, job over at Oxford. So, you know, I like what they did. Um, so it's something to really watch for to keep a really close eye on. When you look at the Oxford Wildcats um, coming up, so let's go now from let's recap the um, you know we got a lot of we got a lot of tournaments coming up here. Um, obviously we got um, let's recap some track and field stuff. Um, we um, Pontiac was the um, obviously when you look at the story here, um, some interesting scores out of the regionals. I mean, obviously when you look at um, some of them, I mean like they were just really. Coming out of nowhere, just mind-boggling some scores a little bit. Um, others were a little bit of a surprise. Um, let's go to region number. This was region 16. It's region 19. This was out at, um, you know, this is where Goodrich was at. I mean, Goodrich's girls, they won it 106.14. Um, North Branch was second with 91.64. Clyde was third with 76.14. Marysville was fourth with 67.14. And Yale round out the top five with 62 points. Um, Pontiac was in this regional. Um, they only scored one point in the girls' side. Um, you know, really interesting there. Of course, Goodrich showing they were dominant. I mean, North Branch kept it close. I mean, like, I mean, like, but Goodrich just had enough. You know what I mean? Like, you know, enough style points to win that one. So, really interesting to see what happens there. I mean, Goodrich, of course, winning the, winning a regional title there. Um, on the boys' side, um, top five scores. Pontiac did not score in this uh, in the boys' regional. Um, Clow ended up winning that one with 96. Yale was second with 78. St. Clair was third with 66. Macomb Lutheran North was fourth with 55. And Marine City was fifth with 54.5. Um, really interesting there in that regional. Um, just really, it wasn't close. I mean, honestly, it really... It really wasn't close. I mean, like, you just got to get credit where credit's due there. Um, you know, so it is what it is. So, you know, for Pontiac, you know what I mean? Scoring one point in the girls. I mean, getting one point. Um, so it was interesting to see. I mean, like, you know, but um, it was interesting. I mean, to say the least, obviously. Um, let's go now to re let's go down to region 18 of course this was in Oswin division two this was uh, at um hazel park um detroit country day ended up winning this um regional and the girls side 
scoring 161 points with their balance. Warren Regina was second with 100. Um, third place tie between St. Clair Shores and Lake South Lake and Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Six, and Blue Bay Hills King with three-way tie with 65 points each. Um, of course, the OA teams that were in here were Ferndale and Ferndale University. Um, in, and they were in Ferndale was seventh with 40 points. Um, and Ferndale University was eight, tied for eighth with Hazel Park with 18 points. So, like I said, the balance really showed itself here. Um, I think, honestly, um, the difference here in this one was Detroit Country Day's balance. It was going to be a challenge for them. It was going to be tough. Um, just honestly here, um, you know, I, I just think Detroit Country Day, their balance showed, and it showed in the meet. I mean, obviously, it's what happened there. Um, boys' side of things, he kind of knew it was going to be tougher. It was going to be tighter. Um, Orchard Lake St. Mary's won it with 141. Detroit Country Day was second with 137. Um, Mathis Lampier was third with 71. Bluebeard's Cranbo Kingswood was um, fourth with um, with 63. And Hazel Park was fifth with 54 points. Ferndale University was sixth with 37. And Ferndale was seventh with 24.5. So when you really look at the top, um, when you really look at the top, Seven here kind of really wasn't a surprise. I I thought it would be much tighter between Orchard Lake St. Mary's and Birmingham Detroit Country Day. Um, just really didn't expect. Um, you know, I thought that. Um, honestly, um, you know, I knew it'd be tight between those two teams. But in the, the day here, you just got to give credit to Eaglets for, you know, overcoming it and winning it. Um, just really. You know, overcoming Yellow Jackets is really, really proven there. Um, honestly, at the end of the day here, you got to get credit for credits too. I mean, Birmingham Detroit Country Day. Um, just, you know, really, um, you know, we'll see what happens there with them. I mean, like, honestly, credit where credit's due. I mean, Birmingham Detroit Country Day, good team. I mean, good. I mean, like, they've been really good all year long. So that's something to really watch for going forward there. Um, Mass and Ice Lamp here taking third, of course. You know, it was going to be tight with them and Booby Hills, Cramp, Kingswood. Um, so that's something to really watch for there going forward. Um, Ferndale, Ferndale U was six and seventh with 37, 24, 45, respectively. Um, good performance from both the Eagles teams. Um, but bottom line, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I'll be very curious to see what happens with them going forward. So we'll see what happens. Um, Let's go now to region number, um, let's go down to region number, okay, here, I'm just looking, looking at the sheets here, um, let's see here, region number seven, this was at, um, this was at, um, you know, the stand, I mean, this was very interesting here, of course, um, region number seven, um, this is where, um, Harper Woods was at. Um, of course, you know, I mean, like a lot of people look at, of course, um, you know, in that regional, um, this was at Gross Point South, um, this, I mean, this was at Gross Point South, of course, um, it was going to be a tough regional regardless for Harper Woods. I mean, obviously with the, um, talent they got, um, obviously on the girls side, of course, um, Harper Woods, they scored 11 points in this one. It really wasn't bad. Um, Detroit Cast Tech won it with 126. Girls Point South with 115 and a half. St. Clair Shores Lakeview was third with 102.5. Girls Point North was fourth with 90. Warren Cousino was fifth with um 61 points. So this was a shock for me. I mean, I didn't really expect Detroit Cast Tech sprinting really took over this meet. I mean, they really showed who they were. I mean, honestly, when you look at it, I mean, give credit where credit's due the technicians. I mean, they came out, competed, played well. I mean, bottom line is, you know, give Detroit Cast Tech credit. They competed, um, made a lot of noise. Um, so it was a credit where credit's due there. Um, so that was my biggest shock was gross was Detroit Cast Tech winning that regional over Adam at Gross Point South, knocking off the host school, Gross Point South. Um, it looked like it was very competitive. I mean, very, very tight meet. 
Um, when you look at it, you're scoring 126 to 115. Then third's 102. I mean, it's kind of really competitive where it's been at. I mean, obviously, you know, St. Clair Shores Lakeview have been very good with the distance. Um, Growth Point South was more balanced. And then Detroit Cass Tech, of course, winning at meet sprints. I mean, that kind of really tells you what happened here. And honestly, um, we're going to see what happens. I mean, we're going to really, really see what happens um, going forward with um, Detroit Cass Tech. I mean, like, I mean, that's a big win for them with that regional. It's, I mean, it's a big, big win for them. I mean, just a huge, huge win for them. So we'll see what happens. I mean, we will see what happens going forward there. Um, big win for them there. On the boys' side, um, Harperwood scored 16 points. Um, Gross Point South won a convincingly blowout, 131 points. Troy Martin Luther King was second with 82 and a half. Warren D. LaSalle was third with 72 points. St. Clair Shores Lakeview was fourth with um, 63 and a half. And Gross Point North round out the top five with 63 points. So, again, dominant performance of the Blue Devils. I mean, Played well, competed well. I mean, honestly, you know, just dominant from the, from Growth Point South. I mean, like home track, you know, they got a chance to showcase their talents, um, and it really showed in that meet. Really did. So credit where credits due. I mean, to um Growth Point um to Growth Point um South on a great performance, dominant performance. Um, honestly, give credit where credits due. So we'll see what happens there going forward there, but. Big win for Gross Point South um, in Region 7. Um, and that was an um, interesting one, obviously. Um, so it was a good win for them going forward there in Region 7. Um, let's go to Region 10. Um, this was over in Macomb County, over at, um, over at Macomb, Dakota. Um, this one took place over at, um, as I mentioned, of course, um, Troy Athens, they were they finished eighth um in the girls' side. Romeo won it convincingly, of course, with the dominant distance, obviously with 127 points. Port Huron Northern was second with 82. Macomb, Dakota was third with 76. Lance Cruz was fourth with 63. And Chippewa Valley rounded out the top five with 49 points. Utica Ford, Utica Eisenhower were tied with six with 46, and Troy Athens was eighth with 45 points. So, kind of really win as I thought it would. Um, you know, get credit where credit's due. Um, Romeo's distance has been really good all year. They're state ranked. There's a reason why they're state ranked. Um, but, give credit where credit's due. I, I thought, you know, in this meeting, I thought Chippewa Valley would have been a lot closer than I thought it would be. But, you know, I, I was really surprised about that. I mean, Macomb, Dakota showed a great showing at 76 points. Port Huron Northern had a good showing as well. Um, Troy Athens, obviously, you knew how good their field events was going to be. Um, and it showed in that meet. It really did. Um, give credit where credit's due with the Red Ox. I mean, like, obviously, you know, the, the way they've been playing. Um, kind of just really, really been showing, of course, where they've been at. I mean, like, give credit where credit's due for Troy Athens. I mean, just, they, they played really well. I mean, they, they really did play well um, in that meet. So, on the boys' side, um, I was a little surprised when I looked at the scores. I mean, like, Troy Athens, they finished 7th with 44 points. Um, New Baltimore, Anchor Bay was 6th with 45. Utica was 5th with 50.33. Um, Utica Eisenhower was 4th with 51 points. Frazier was third with 70 and a half. Romeo was second with 74.33. And Chippewa Valley had 97 points. So when you look at this one here, and I think honestly, um, the Big Reds, you know, they showed their sprints, their sprint prowess in this meet. They were completely, you know what I mean? The sprinting ended up being a difference here. Um, you know, they found just enough distance. To overcome Romeo. Um, Frazier, I thought, had a great show in the Ramblers. I mean, they kind of had a really, really strong showing, to say the least, there. Um, 
But give credit to the Big Reds. I mean, they competed hard. I mean, they they ended up winning this meet, uh, this regional, um, pretty convincingly. I mean, 23 points, you know what I mean? Pretty convincingly, no doubt about it. Give credit to the Big Reds. I mean, they played really well. Um, let's go now to um, region number... Um, Let's go now to region number, um, okay, um, let's go down to region number nine here. This was over at, um, over at, um, Milford, and this was a really interesting meet. Um, obviously, when you look at this meet here, um, you know, over at Milford, I mean, it was, it was going to be a tight meet, um, and it did prove, it did prove it to be tough. Um, um, on the girls' side, Farm Sales Mercy had no problems winning it with 109 points. Wall Lake Central was second with 77 points. Wall Lake Northern was third with 65 and a half. Milford was fourth with 63. Uh, oh, Milford was fourth with 64 and a half. Um, West Bloomfield and Oxford both tied for fifth with 63 each. Farmington was seventh with um, 56 points. Clarkston was eighth with 53 and a half. Lake Orion was ninth with um 41 and a half. Um Wall Lake Western rounded out the top 10 with 40 points. Um North Farmington was 11 with 15 points. Lapeer was 12th with 7 points. And White Lake Lakeland was um, you know, was 13th with only five points. So when you look at this this part, and you kind of really gotta look at it from a couple different perspectives. Um one, you have to look at, of course, the, um, you know, you got to look at, of course, Farm Tales Mercy, they're deep this year. They're balanced. I mean, they're well coached. I mean, they know what they're doing. I mean, you know that they're competitive. You know that they, they're solid every year. You're in, you're out. And I think, honestly, when you look at the performance the Marlins did, um, they played well. I mean, they really did. Um, I thought, honestly, I thought Oxford had a better performance than I thought they would, um, considering the struggles they've had this year. Um, I thought Oxford played really well in this meet. Um, West Bluefield with 63 points, obviously, that's, um, you know, that's going to help big time. Um, top five finish there. It was really tight between, um, I, it was really tight between Clarkson and Wall Lake Northern, um, only separated by 12 points. I mean, that kind of tells you something there. Just really impressed with how, um, you know, really impressed with how um, things that are. I mean, like, obviously, give credit where credit's due. Um, but when you look at the OA teams that were in here, um, West Bluebell, Oxford, Farmington, Clarkson, Lake Orion, and North Farmington, um, it was going to be a challenge, to say the least, obviously. And give credit where credit's due. I mean, like, you know, I mean, it was going to be a tall order. Um, I personally thought Wall Lake, what, Wall Lake Central would have won it because of their um, throwing threats. Um, but they had a second-place finish with 77 points. Um, so, it's a good performance of Vikings girls. I mean, like, obviously, um, you know, we really look at it. So... You know, good performance from them. So, we'll see what happens going forward there with them. Um, on the boys' side, um, Wall Lake Central ended up winning us with 102 points. West Bloomfield was second with 85. Wall Lake Northern was third with 63. Lake Orion was fourth with 62. Novi Detroit Catholic Central was 56 and a half. Clarkson was sixth with 56. Lakeland was seventh with 46. Milford was... Ace with 40 points. Lapeer was ninth with 38 and a half. Oxford was 10th with 29 points. Wall Lake Western was in Farmington tied for 11 with 27 points. North Farmington was 13th with 21 points. And Waterford Kettering had 6 points. So, when you really look at this side of things, um, you know, Wall Lake Central, you knew they would be very good in the field events, particularly in the throws. They had they had at least top three in the disc. Says a lot. That's 18 points. Really is. I mean, but then you look at 
Um, but then you look at, you know, West Bloomfield. We knew how good their sprints were. You knew how good that they were going to be. And give credit to where credit's due with the, um, with the Vikings. Give credit where credit's due. I mean, what, I mean, like, actually with the Lakers. I mean, the Lakers performed pretty well in this meet. They, they really did. Um, but also, you got to give credit to, um, you know, also Lake Orion. I thought they competed pretty well in this meet. They lost by one point for third place to Wall Lake Northern. Um, Clarkson, I thought, had, had a good showing of 56 points. A little surprised with Oxford, only scoring 29 points. Just a little surprise there. Um, didn't expect that. Um, and then you look at, um, you know, Farmington. I was also surprised a little bit, only scoring 27 points. North Farmington with 21 points. Just, I thought they would do a little bit better. Um, you know, so that's really interesting to see what happens there. I think on the girls' side, I was surprised Farmington didn't score a lot. I mean, he scored 56 points. I was a little surprised there. Um, really didn't expect, you know what I mean, Farmington to really... I thought Farmington would have performed better. I, I mean, honestly, you know, I'm just thinking honestly. So we'll see what happens there at Farmington. Um, just really curious to see what happens there with them. Um, and then, of course, our last regional recap is region number six. Um, this is actually region number, yeah, region eight. This was over at, um, this was over at, um, Detroit Renaissance. Um, of course, Avondale, um, a lot of OA representation in this district, in this regional. Um, but it, it was a heck of a regional. I mean, like, obviously, when you look at it here, I mean, like, um, Couple surprises, couple of um good wins, obviously. On the girls' side, Detroit Renaissance won it with 135 points. Oak Park was second, 108. Rochester was third with 80.5. Adams was fourth with 48 and a half. Royal Oak was fifth with 42. Groves was sixth with 41. Bloomby Hills was seventh with 40. Um, Troy was eighth with 39. Stony Creek was ninth with 36.5. Seaholm was 10th with 30 points. Berkeley was 11th with 18 points. And Savage Arson Tech and Detroit Mumford tied for 12th with two points each. So when I look at the girls' side of things, and I think honestly, um, you know, you're going to expect, you know, Detroit Renaissance and Oak Park basically to compete each other in the sprints. But the distance, Rochester, I thought, had a great chance. I thought Rochester looked a little bit more well rounded than thought. Um, I think, honestly, when you look at what Rochester did, I mean, like, you know, especially with the year they had, winning the Red, um, winning the OA League meet, um, says a lot. I mean, it really says a lot to what Rochester's done. Um, in all honesty, um, really, I mean, give credit where credit's due. I mean, like, but when you look at Detroit Renaissance, you know, they found just enough depth you know, to win this one against a very good Oak Park team. I mean, Oak Park, we know, is very good in the sprint relays. They're very good in the hurdles. Um, there is questions with them surrounding distance um, and also field events. I mean, that was an issue, I thought, for Oak Park coming in the air. I thought if a team would expose them, that would be the area where to expose them. Um Kind of surprised about Adams' score, 48.5, um, considering it's been a rough year for them. Um, Royal Oak was fifth with 42 points. Of course, obviously riding Ellie Finch. Finch is 20 points in the shot and discus. Um, obviously, when you look at what Ellie Finch has done, um, really been incredible. You know, 20 of the 42 for Royal Oak. Um, Bluefield Hills, um, I see 40 points was not a bad score. I mean, when you look at it here, only nine points, only 12 points separated, I mean, fourth through ninth. Really was in this meet. Really was. I mean, so honestly, when you look at a team like Rochester, um, you know, when you look at from Adams over to Stony Creek, you know, it was going to be tight. I mean, Seaholm finished 10th with 30 points. I mean, that really says something right there. Um, just 
the impressive nature of, you know, how everything's been. So, like I said, good performance there. Just surprised, you know, Detroit Renaissance winning the region on their home track with 135.5 points, um, edging out Oak Park, who scored 108 points. Um, so, really, just a dominant performance there from, um, from, um, Detroit Renaissance, um, knocking off a really good Oak Park team. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what ha what happens there, especially in the Oak County meet coming up over at Oxford on Friday. We're going to preview that. Um, why I think that um, the OA could do pretty well. I think Rochester Adams got a great chance here um, to do some damage in this region and in, in the Oak County meet. Um, and then on the boys' side, um, Rochester Adams and UD Jesuit, you kind of expected that these are going to be the two teams that are going to go tough. And it really lived up to the hype. I mean, Adams ended up winning it with 120 points. UD Jesuit was second with 120 points. Troy was third with 68 points. Berkeley was fourth with 46 points. Oak Park was fifth with them, 42 points. Detroit Renaissance was sixth with 38 points. Rose was 7th with them, 36 points. Stony Creek was 8th with 29.5. Um, Avenue was ninth with 26. Royal Oak was 10th with 25. Rochester was 11th with 23. Southern Artisan Tech was 12th with 19 points. Boopy Hills was 13th with them, 13 points. Um, Seaholm was 14th with 12.5 points. And then you have Detroit Mumford and Birmingham Brother Rice who each scoring one point each. Um, you know, when you look at Rochester Adams, you got it. Everything starts and ends with the senior class. <laughs> it starts and ends with the senior class. Um, honestly, you got to get credit where credit's due. I mean, Adams won the red. They won the OA Red Light League meet. <laughs> and now winning the regional. You knew Adams' balance was going to be the difference in me. It was going to be the big difference. And it proved otherwise. Because you got to get credit where credit's due. You know, I mean, they qualified, I think, at least 16 athletes in eight different events. They did just enough to overcome UD Jesuit. That says a lot. Really does. Give credit where credit's due. I mean, the Cubs, I mean, like, great team. Great sprinting team. If it came down to a game of depth, game of relays, I mean, I would take, you know, Rochester Adams in a heartbeat in this meet. UD Jesuit did everything they could to win this meet. <laughs> but it came down to Adams' mid-distance was the difference. Really was. And they got some points in areas where you didn't expect to get them. And then, of course, you look at other OA teams that were impressive. I mean, you know, Troy took third with 68 points. That says a lot about how Troy's been doing. Troy's had a nice year. I mean, they really have had a had a great year. Berkeley, fourth with 46 points. I mean, like, you know... I think a lot of that, you look at a thrower like David Rollins, who's had a really nice year for Berkeley. Great career. I mean, for the Bears. This great career. Um, Oak Park, I was kind of surprised with them. Um, I thought they would score more points um, instead of 42. I mean, I thought they would score much more. Um, Detroit Renaissance was 6 with 38. Groves was 7 with 36. Stony Creek was 8th with 29. And Avondale was 9th with 26. And Royal Oak had 25. And Rochester, 23. A&T had 19. Blue Hills, 13. And Seaholm had 12 and a half. So that kind of tells you how close this meet was. And it was close. I mean, but at the end of the day, it came down to the two top teams that it were expected would be. And you got to get credit where credit's due. I mean... You got to give credit to Rochester Adams. Um, they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. And they've proven that time and time again. Um, I will be very curious to see how the regional is going to go for them. 
Oh, the county meet's going to go for them, obviously. Then you have the state meet coming up. It's going to be over on the west side of the state, which is going to be really interesting. Of course, they get to all go to Rockford, um, compete in the state meet, um, where that's going to be just absolutely interesting to see what happens there. Um, so give credit where credit's due. Um, we'll see what happens going forward there. Um, let's now go from, we're going to preview the Oakland County meet coming up on Friday. Um, which is going to be interesting. Uh, when I look at the boys side of things, obviously Rochester Adams has to be one of the favorites, but so is Wall Lake Central. West Bloomfield is probably a wild card because West Bloomfield obviously got the sprints. You obviously got the, um, you know, you obviously got, um, you know, and then of course with Wall Lake Central, you got the field events there, especially in the throws. Um, Rochester Adams, they got a bit of everything. I mean, they got a little bit of everything where I think they're going to make some noise. Um, I really think the Highlanders, they can really do some damage. Um, honestly, when you look at Rochester Adams, I mean, they could really, they're going to score a bunch. They're going to score a bunch of points. I mean, I expect they will, especially in the mid-distance. Um, could a team come from behind and shock them? Probably not. But Milford maybe could be a sleeper in this. I think Milford could be a sleeper. Um, not a great regional for Milford, but I think it could surprise some people. Um, but you obviously your favorites have to be West Bluefield, has to be um, Rochester Adams, has to be Wild Lake Central. I mean, you know, those are three teams. I'm really, really curious to see how these teams do there over at Oxford on Friday, the boys' side of things. On the girls' side, yeah, Farm Tales Mercy is going to be one to really watch. Um, I also think that um, West Bolivia can make some noise here as well. Um, but I think a wild card is Lake Orion. A Lake Orion, a Clarkson, and Oxford. I think those three teams are wild cards. Because when you look at Lake Orion, Lake Orion's a young team. Pretty young team. Um, they got some They got some good sprinters. Um Throwers are solid. They got they got some good distance, um, but they're just young this year. Of course, Coach Andrew McDonald's done a really nice job with them. Um, Oxford's another team to really watch for. I think the Wildcats they had a better showing in the regional. Um, another team to watch for, as I meant earlier, was Rochester. There's another one, but Clarkson's another one. I mean, when you look at the Wolves, I think the Wolves they can make some noise. I mean, I think Clarkson could be another team to watch. But Rochester, obviously balance, especially in the distance. Watch for Lucy Cook. I think she can have a big meet in this in the um in the county meet. I think she'll make some noise. Um not sure if she's going to the state meet or not. I mean, I'm not sure if she is. I mean, I gotta look at the standings and all that, but you know, but bottom line is you gotta get credit where credit's due. Um I think honestly, um, I really think honestly here in this one here, I really got it. Actually, another team to watch is Oak Park. Oak Park's another favorite. I think the Knights will be favored in this regional. Prime Tales Mercy definitely be favored in this regional. I just, the only thing that concerns me with Oak Park is going to be the lack of depth, uh, particularly the distance events. So that's another area I'm very concerned about with Oak Park. Um, so that's something to really, really watch for um, going forward there. So that's my take on the Oakland County meet. I mean, I, it's going to be a really interesting meet, to say the least. Um, but honestly, I think it's going to come down to is Ken Oak Park, you know, can, is Oak Park going to be a player? Can they threaten a team like Farm Tales Mercy? Um, West Bloomfield's a wild card. Lake Orion, Oxford, Clarkson are, another, are also wild card teams, along with Rochester. Um, they could make some noise. So we'll see what happens. I mean, as we head into the um, Oakland County meet, that's coming up Friday over at Oxford, um, which should be a real interesting meet, to say the least, over there. And then, of course, you have the state meet the next weekend, at the Memorial weekend, to close out the season. So, to close out the track season. So, a lot of things to look forward to, definitely, in the world of track and field these next two weeks. Um, obviously, you got the Oakland County meet this weekend. You got freshman Oakland County meets going on right now on we're film, as we're filming. Um, and then, of course, you have the Oakland County Middle School track meet coming up next Thursday um, over at Clarkston. 
and then you have um the um state meet of course division two i think both division one division two um out on the west side of the state division one will be over at rockford and i think division two is over at um i think he's kentwood i think i mean don't quote me on that so it'll be interesting to see what happens um from track and field side of things um let's go to some other regionals of course they've been going on right now as we speak um obviously you got um boys lacrosse has been underway um like i said i still think it's gonna be um you know, I still think it, I still I don't really think there's going to be a lot of changes in all these regionals um, over in lacrosse. I think we previewed them last week. Um, let's look at girls soccer. I mean, obviously, you look at of course soccer's kicking off. Um, you know, coming up really soon. Um, District six at Clarkson. You got Flushing taking on Davison. Clarkson takes on Shorts Creek. Lapeer takes on Oxford, and then um, the winner of Flushing and Davison takes on Grand Blank. Um, Grand Lake's favored, but Oxford and, um, but Oxford and, um, Clarkson are going to have huge stays in this. Um, maybe I think Oxford's got the best chance here out of, out of them all. I mean, I, I just think the Wildcats, you know, couldn't they beat Grand Blank? I think they can. I mean, like, I don't know what it is with Oxford against Grand Blank. I mean, like, it's been, they've had a lot of bad luck when they take on the Bobcats. I mean, like, their whole, their... I mean, this senior class has had a lot of bad luck when it comes to taking on the Bobcats. Um, so they got to find a way to overcome this. Um, I think they got a shot here against Grand Blank when I look at this district here. But, you know, when you look at it here, I think Clarkston and, um, I think Clarkston and, um, and Shorts Creek, you know what I mean? That winner, I mean, like, you know, deep down, Clark, Grand Blank's going to get probably one of the OA schools. I mean, they're going to obviously get one of them. Um, if it were me, if I were betting man right now, I probably would say Oxford over Clarkston. Um, but you never know. But you really never know what's going to happen. So, but when I look at this district here, I, I think it's going to come down to is Grand Blank was either Oxford or slash Clarkston. And I think whoever wins that Oxford Clarkston game. I think it's going to beat Grand Blank and move on. I, I, I just got it. A gut feeling of myself here. So I, I, just, I like Grand Blank. I mean, I like Oxford or Clarkson, whoever wins that one, to knock off Grand Blank and move on. Um, District 7 over at Lakeland, you got North Farmington taking on Wall Lake Central. Wall Lake Northern taking on Lakeland. Water Vermont taking on West Bloomfield. The winner of North Farmington, Wall Lake Central takes on Milford. Um... Milford's going to be a player. They're right there with both. They're right there with North Farmington and West Bloomfield. Wall Lake Northern, of course, won the Lake Valley Conference crown this year. Um, dangerous match with Lakeland looming. Um, so when I look at this matchup here, um, it's going to come down to is, um, you know, I, I see it's going to likely be a, um, a rematch, a Lake Valley rematch between um, Wall Lake Northern and um, Milford. Um, West Bluefield has had a great year winning the blue title this year. Um, but this is going to be a step up. And North Farmington, we know, has had some struggles this year. So, when you look at this matchup here, I, I, everything looks like it's going to be a, a Milford versus Wall Lake Northern, um, district final, which is really likely here. Um, and both those two teams have split. I mean, obviously, you know, when you look at both Northern and Milford, I mean, like, they're gonna. It's gonna be interesting to see how this goes. I mean, like when you really look at the matchups. I mean, like so. I think it's gonna be interesting to see here. Um, but I like. Um, but if I had to pick a betting team here, I mean, I mean, like of course Milford's been at um, Lakeland before, and but also like the Lakes Valley schools. Every everywhere is like similar, you know, eerily similar to each other. Um, but I'm gonna take if I had to take a a team right now, I'd probably give the edge to Milford. Um, I, I think the Mavericks, you know, the way they're playing right now, I just think that um, they're going to be solid enough. I think they're going to move on the next round. Um, beat a very good Wall Lake Northern team. Um, District A at Novi. You got um, Farmington taking on Farmington's Mercy. Livonia Stevenson versus South Lion East. Northville versus South Lion. And the winner of Farmington, Farmington's Mercy takes on Novi. Um, Northville's the favorite in this one. They're the top team in the state. One of the top teams in the state. 
Novi could give some problems, obviously, to Northville. Um, you know, I, I mean, Farmville's Mercy could be another team that could give problems. I mean, like, who knows? I mean, we'll see. I mean, who knows what will happen? Um, but at the end of the day here, I got to give the edge to the, um, to the um, Mustangs. I think Northville will win this one here. I think they're going to be, they're going to win it pretty convincingly. Um, they're going to beat Novi and move on. So we'll see what happens going forward there. Um, District 12 is at Growth Point South. Um, Dearborn Heights, Portson versus Dearborn Heights, Crestwood. Dearborn takes on Harper Woods. Detroit Western versus Growth Point South. And then that winner of Dearborn, Dearborn Heights, Crestwood takes on Detroit Cast Tech. This is not a very strong district. And I think, you know, obviously the reason why I say this is because, you know, when you look at the competition, um, just really not that strong. Um, but I've got to give an edge to, I got to give an edge to, um, Dearborn Heights Crestwood here. I think, the, you know, Troy Cass Tech's the top seed, but I, I, I don't know if I see him beat Crestwood. Um, you know, I mean, so we'll see what happens. I mean, this is not, as I mentioned, it's not a strong district over at Gross Point South, but who knows? We're going to see what happens there. Um, district 13 is at Royal Oak. You got Berkeley versus Groves. Bloomby Hills with a &T. Seahome versus Royal Oak. And the winner of Berkeley and Groves takes on Troy. This is a pick em district. Um, you got the Fang State Champs in here in Booby Hills. They're defending D1 State Champs. You got Troy's been good all year. Royal Oak's been okay. Seahome's been good. Groves has been good. Um, I think the winner of Berkeley and Groves will be interesting. Um, I think this is virtually a pick em district because honestly, that's what I'm seeing is a pick em district where I just think, honestly, you know, I think, you know, whoever wins this district's got a good chance. Um, it's not like the Kiss of Death district, um, which is the next district, um, be over at Swineart. But I think, honestly, here, when you look at this district here, um, you know, obviously, I, I think tr you got to give the edge to Berkeley here. I think Berkeley could be a favorite. Seahome's a player, but Troy, obviously, I think Troy's got a great draw. Out of this whole, out of all this, so it'll be very interesting to see what happens here, um, going forward there. Um, District 14 at Utica. This is the Kiss of Death District at Swine Art. You got Lake Orion versus Adams, Stony Creek versus Utica Eisenhower, Romeo versus Utica. Then the winner of Lake Orion Adams takes on Rochester. Um, this is no doubt the Kiss of Death District because you got Lake Orion taking on Rochester Adams. Both teams are good teams. Stony Creek, Utica, Eisenhower, both those teams are very good teams. Romeo versus Utica, both teams are very good teams. And then Rochester. I mean, Rochester hasn't lost a game all year long. I mean, they got a lot of proven experience. You look at players like Alice Mack. You look at Natalie Race. You look at Kylie Robinson. You look at Ava Williams. You know what all three of them, you know what all those players have? Ring a bell with? If you're a girls basketball player. Because they all play girls basketball. And you look at a course with what Rochester's done this year. I mean, they went up north, played a good tournament up there. Um, Lake Orion um, was, they had a good um, tournament, their own tournament. But you look at Rochester Adams, you know how good they are. You look at how good Stony Creek is. You look at how good Eisenhower is. I mean, it's going to be interesting. It'll be really interesting to see what happens there. I mean, but... As I mentioned, this is the group of deaths. So, I think whoever wins this district has a great chance, I think, to win the state title. And that says a lot. And you look at a team like Rochester, who last year was in the Final Four. Who, you know, they lost a tough one to, um, to Northville. Um, they would love to get another shot at the Mustangs. I mean... They would love to get another shot at him. I mean, and then you look at Lake Orion and Adams. That could be a low-scoring game. Or Adams could go in there, you know what I mean, and do what they do. So it would be very interesting to see what happens there. Stony Creek and Utica Eisenhower. Um, You know these two neighborhood rivals. They're going to be interesting to see what happens. So I'm curious to see what happens there in that matchup. Um, 
Romeo and Utica. That's going to be a good matchup. That's another rivalry game. So all these games that are being played are rivalry games. You know, playing in soccer, in the kiss of death. So that kind of says a lot. You know, I think the NPR got this, got this district right. So we'll see what happens. I got Rochester being favored in this district. And they're going to be, whoever wins this region, whoever wins this district, has got a great chance to head to um, East Lansing. Um, district 15 at Troy Athens. You got Troy Athens taking on Sterling Heights. Chippewa Valley versus Stevenson. Utica Ford 2 versus Warren Cousineau. Frazier versus Warren Mott. Um, interesting how this is going to work out. Um, I think Troy Athens will win this district. Um, it's an eight teamer. Um, home field matters here. Um, clearly, that's what I'm seeing right now. I think home home field wins this. I gotta give the edge to the um, Red Ox. Um, but I think Utica Ford. I think Sterling could give some problems. Maybe Chippewa Valley. Maybe Frazier. But end of the day here, I gotta go with Troy Athens. I just think too much, too much Red Ox in this one. District 24, you got at Boom Hills, Cranbrook Kings, we got Renaissance. Detroit Renaissance taking on Wall Lake Western. Ferdinand takes on Livonia Clarenceville. The winner of Renaissance and Western will take on Boom Hills, Cranbrook Kingswood. And the winner of Ferndale, Livonia Clarenceville takes on Birmingham Marion. Um, my goodness. Everything looks like it's going to be a, cra or, I mean, like, a Cranes versus Mustangs district final. Birmingham Marion has had a nice year. Their coach is is in his final season over there at Birmingham Marion. So you know that they're going to be playing for for their coach. You know what I mean? I mean he's already said it's going to be the it's going to be his last year. So you know they're going to be playing for something. You know Bloomfield's Canberra Kings, but they're going to be a tough out for anybody. Um, Ferndale could be a sleeper. Maybe Livonia Clarenceville. Could they be a sleeper? Who knows? So, it's going to be interesting because I don't really see anybody touching, um, Birmingham Marion in this district. Maybe Clarenceville, Kingswood. Maybe. Maybe them. And they could do some damage in this one. I think it could seriously do some damage. Um, I see... You know, and it'll be interesting to see what happens here. But I, I honestly here, Birmingham Marion, you know, is a team to beat in this one. Fern just had a nice year. Um, but Birmingham Marion will be too much, especially on the Cranes home pit, uh, on the Cranes home turf. Um, so we'll see what happens going forward there um, in that one. And then our last district's over at Goodrich. Avondale versus Waterford Cuttering. Holly versus Brandon. The winner of Avondale Waterford Cuttering takes on Orchard Lake St. Mary's. And the winner of Holly and Ortonville Brandon takes on Goodrich. So, it's an interesting district. Goodrich has got home field. Has the best team on paper. Brandon's a possible sleeper. Um, Avondale is an interesting team to watch. Um, when I look at this district here, I think this district is Goodrich's to lose. Because you know how good the Martians are. I mean, they are very good. And I think that, I think they got a turf field. I mean, they were turf or on grass. I mean, I'm not sure. But it'd be something to really watch for. It'd be really interesting to see what happens there. Um, but it's going to come down to, as I think is, whoever wins this district, they got a chance. But I really think right now, with the way everything is set up, I think Goodrich has got a great chance to um, move on and win this district. So that's something to really, really watch for going forward there. All right, my final thoughts. Obviously, keeping on the lacrosse situation for their regionals. Obviously, we got them. Um, obviously, we got um. I think tennis regionals. I think they they've been playing. I know that baseball, softball. Of course, I'll post those previews in the blog at Saturday night forty six fifty at blogspot dot com. Um, so we're getting near the final stretch of the season. Um, of course, postseason is gonna be underway, and then of course, you know, when we get into June. Um, you know, you got football. Thinking football minds, obviously. So we'll see what happens going forward there. Going forward there. So we'll see what happens. All right, man, I'm going to sign off here. Um, make sure you follow the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com. We're going to keep an awesome eye on the um, boys' basketball jobs at Rochester Adams and the girls' basketball job at North Farmington. So those are two jobs to keep an eye on um, as we head forward. All right, man, I'm going to sign off here. 
take care. God bless, and I will see you all next week, everybody.